Hallelujah. Okay. So uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us. Notice that's past tense. Hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Hallelujah. Now you already have a seat with him. I'll read you that in, in a moment. Hallelujah. It may seem a little over your head right now, but wow, just go ahead and relax and, and enjoy your place in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. It's called peace. You didn't do anything to earn it. You can't do anything to keep it except continue to believe. But we'll cover that. All right, look at verse 4. It says, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. That word chosen scares some people. But uh, he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us, which almost sounds like a conflict of terms, it's not. I'll show you about that momentarily. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and glory of his grace wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. Hallelujah. Now years ago, you know, I, I had this thing that I found out about rejection so I could share it with people. Okay, well, uh, you're not rejected, you're accepted in the beloved. Okay, that, that's just a little one. Okay, but, but here's a, a statement for you. Technically, which we just read about this, technically the living God could not be chosen by a fallen man. Okay, now uh, there, there's a lot of, uh, I guess what you'd call theological reasons for that. But essentially, fallen man, you know, all, all fallen man is going to do with his uh, chooser is make mistakes. Okay, <clears throat> so the living God could not be chosen by fallen man, although God himself could not choose for us. Okay, so when it, when it comes to the choices of life that you face and even choices about your destiny, He's, he's left that in your keeping. You know, man is created a free moral agent, and nothing that God has ever done takes away that free moral agency. You're still choosing everything that you do. Now, it's a shock to some people to suddenly realize, oh, you mean I chose the, my family? Well, that's, that's a good point. You know, it's to be talked about. Hallelujah. But let, let's look at another one of these. If you would, I'm going to ask you to go with me over to Romans chapter 8. Chapter 8 of Romans is got to be one of the th thickest uh, yeah, chapters in the Bible. You know, by the way, the Apostle Paul, I decided years ago that I was just going to let him be great. Because, you know, after this kind of thing today, I came to the conclusion, well, he, his level of understanding is way above where I was. And I don't mind that. I'm, I'm you know, I'm willing, uh, so I, I you know, let, let the great be great. I'll just follow along, follow after those who through faith, faith and patience inherit the promises. That's what I'm doing. All right, so Romans chapter 8, this is a passage that actually bypasses human understanding. Uh, but if you would look at verse 29, Romans 8, 29, it says, For whom he did foreknow. Now that's foreknow before the foundation of the world. He also did predestinate. Now that's how he got away with choosing us. Because he foreknew before the foundation of the world that you were going to choose him. So he didn't bypass your will and he, you know, he worked out a way for you and I to choose him. So it, it, it's kind of like he made a way for you. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. And like I said, that word scares some people too. 
Because they, their, their thinking is that word takes away choice. No, it doesn't. You know, it, 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 I'll give you an, an example. You've been predestined. How many of you are saved? You've been predestinated all your life. And you're already familiar with the reality of it. Because when you, for instance, when you look back in your life and you're trying to figure out how in the world did I make it through all that stuff that I made it through before Christ. You know, he kept you from dying in those car wrecks. He kept you from destroying yourself with drugs or alcohol or money or whatever the case may be. Yeah, all, all of that was him favoring you beyond the place where you were. So he predestinated you to be conformed to the image of his dear son. Hallelujah. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. I have to tell you a little story. I was speaking at a conference, and, and uh, they, they picked me up at the airport. There was a young man doing the driving, and he proceeded to tell me, trying to convince me, you know, on the way to the conference that he was right about this. He, he was like uh, 19, 20 years old, which is not a discredit. But he, he began to try to tell me that there was none of us were called. And I thought, gee, you know, uh, well, might as well just take me back to the uh, airport because that's the only reason why I'm here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you're called, and, and I'll show you that in just a moment, but that's actually the reason why you're in church today. See, this is what separates you from the world. You're choosing already to be here. You, you obeyed the call, and here you are. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. So you, you got more than one calling on you. First of all, you're called into the kingdom. That's really the one that he's specifically talking about in that passage. But then the apostle Paul talked about Another calling, he called, talked about his calling and the office that he stood in. That seems to be another word that scares people. He's, he's not talking about more work, if, if that's what office means to you. But, but an, an office in the kingdom means that there's going to be more grace to accomplish the will of God. And the reward just goes up. Astonishingly. All right, so you're called, uh, first of all, you're called into the kingdom. Now that one's going to stay with you all your life. And any time and every time you might start getting uh, a little uh, maybe uh, tired of, of things, the calling is going to pull on you. One of the things it will do also is give you the grace to endure the shame and the hardship that might be associated with your relationship with the Lord. Remember, he's a stumbling block to the nations. Though you might not know any of them, there are a lot of people on earth who don't like Jesus. Yeah, now, you know, they, they uh, uh, maybe are, are also not getting along with him because he is a lamb, they try to take advantage of him, okay? But they're, they're going to have a bigger problem when he comes back. Because when he comes back, he comes back as the conquering hero. He's a conqueror. And, and you know, all he's got to do is open his mouth and the battle is over with. Now, I like to be around Jesus. Now, I, I realize that some people don't like him, and so I personally get scorned for my association with Jesus. So I, I personally decided years ago, you know, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So I just went ahead and made my peace you know, with, with the fact that, that there's a reality that there will be people 
who will look down on me because of who I am and what I do and what I stand for. You know, I had a great time last week. I was, I was in two stores, one right behind the other, and uh, I was able to just raise my voice and uh, declare the grace of God in, in the name of Jesus more than once. Hallelujah. And I, I really enjoy doing that. I've always been like that. I will not change. You know, if, if, if it bothers you, you probably ought to think about going ahead and finding another church. Because I'm not going to become a dud. It's, glad to, it's good to have you back. There he is. There he is. Okay, so that's not even the, the whole of the verse yet. So uh, are you called? Are you willing to be called? Yeah, you're called into the kingdom. Okay, the additional calling which the Apostle Paul brought, brought out is what you're called to do in the kingdom. Hallelujah. And, and that's, that's where people also get a little soft. Hallelujah. But, you know, the Lord called me to be a pastor, and I didn't even know what that was. But I found out with time. Hallelujah. I got a lot to talk about relative to that, but this is not the place of the time. It's not about that. I am a pastor, period. Pastor is the Greek word poimen, and it means to lead and feed. And that's what I do. So... Hallelujah. Whom he called, them he also justified. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not justified by what I do. See, I'm justified by who I am. Or who he is in me. Okay, justified, uh, never sinned. That's a little thing I learned a long time ago. So I am justified. How about you? Are you justified in him? Okay, you don't have to make excuses. If you get into sin, tell him about it. Hallelujah. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. Now that's a word that Jesus used repetitively right before he went to the cross. And he was talking about glorify them with the same glory wherewith you glorify me or will glorify me. And he was talking about resurrection power. So that, that word is actually a reference to a precursor of an event that's coming in your life. It's part of your destiny, should you choose that. Glory to God. Okay, let, let's keep going. Uh, that shocks people. I thought I was already, well, you, you're on the way now, but no, you, you need to keep believing. All right, so uh, here's a, a little bit more for you. Man himself has to make his, his choices uh, because he will be held accountable for all of it. Remember with Adam, uh, I mean, it was, it was the, all part of the, the same chapter in the book of Genesis. Adam and Eve both ate the fruit of the tree and God uh, then immediately began to let Adam and Eve know what their choices had produced. So they were held accountable for what they did. Got quiet on that one too. Hallelujah. God is good. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so then here, here's a big statement for you. God, being gracious, decided to send his son to take the blame for man's sin. Now, there, there are uh, reasons for that, but, uh, and, and you find this, here's a, here's a, a footnote for you. Uh, if you learn how to read the Bible like it's a book, then it will tell you a lot of things that you don't know. New, New Testament, you should read it like it's a book instead of, you know, picking out selected passages and, you know, and yeah. Like, my God shall supply all our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Okay, well, that's a part of a statement. And if you're not already giving, it's not necessarily going to apply to you. 
So that's the reason why you learn how to read the whole thing. Hallelujah. Okay, so being glorified is also like that. You have a, a choice of glorification. You can either go the high way or you can go the low way. Hallelujah. I, I, I've actually had preachers tell me that they would rather stay a lower. And I thought, what for, man? You know, I've already been low. I, I tried that. I want to go high. Okay, so God being gracious decided to send his son to take the blame for man's sin. Now, technically, man could not fix his own sin. And, and it's really a blood thing. See, because after Adam and Eve both sinned, their blood, which would have been the cost for their sin, their blood was tainted. So their death which came eventually, their death would not pay for their sin. So God sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you have to understand it's not a matter of volume because one drop of his blood would have done it for the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Okay. So, oh, and then the name for that, the word for that is the word redemption. We've been redeemed. All right. And so uh, God fixed all of man's deficiency, uh, which uh, when you read the Bible like it's a book, particularly in the Old Testament, God uses this phrase over and over again. He calls it the imagination of man's heart. Okay, so nothing would change the heart of man uh, without a complete replacement. Hallelujah. All right, so Jesus died for us so that God could give us a new heart. That's Ezekiel chapter 36. Hallelujah. How many of you are saved? So you have a new heart. You know, there's no point in trying to condemn your yourself. It's not going to work. Amen. It won't stick. You know, some, sometimes believers try to use this to condemn themselves all the time. It's, it's the thing that sets you free. Okay. <clears throat> so he fixed all of man's deficiency including the imagination of his heart. Now, so you have a different picture on the inside of you. The only thing you will ever be satisfied with is the kingdom. The world system, which is the other imagination, is something that you're not interested in. And there's the, two, the, the, the uh, comparison right over there. The world system is the, is the low side. The kingdom is the high side. So you have a heart... That is right towards God. Yeah, you were given, to it, given it as a free gift. Yeah, your heart is already uh, new according to his plan, his promises. Glory to God. Okay, so uh, let me show you a couple of these. If you would please go with me over to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Remembering that you couldn't work your way into the kingdom. There's nothing that you could have done that would have put you in the kingdom. Glory to God. Because man is not saved by works. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says, For he, God, made him, Jesus, to be sin for us. Okay, now this is called a substitutionary sacrifice. It's a, it's a swap. Okay. So Jesus, uh, God took our sin and put it on Jesus. So that he would pay the price for us. Bearing in mind, it wouldn't have done any good for man to pay for it anyway. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made 
the righteousness of God in him. See, we did no righteousness, but it was given to us in the exchange. So God did a swap. He took our sin and put it on Jesus and took his righteousness and gave it to us. Now, it's a free gift. It belongs to you. It's yours. You wake up tomorrow morning even when you feel bad and look bad. You're still righteous. Woo, hallelujah. Glad I came to church today. All right, so I want to share an, uh, another one. So that's part of what God did. He put that. Now, that's just a little part or a part. It's not little, but it's only one. Okay, uh, and here's another one. Ephesians chapter 2. Hallelujah. God is good. This is not intended to be a doctrinal message. This is a biblical message. Okay, so your destiny is still your responsibility to choose. You see that over there on the wall? It's either the top one or the bottom one. It's your choice. Take your pick. I'm, I've already decided what I'm doing. I'm going with the top one. You mean it's that, that simple? Yeah. Well, it, it gets complicated because the devil enters into the picture and tempts and draws and lies and steals. Okay? But you still are the one making the, making the choice. Why do you think he's picking on you? If it doesn't make any difference what you do, why is the devil tempting you? See, that doesn't even make sense. All right, so Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And you, uh, I'm going to put myself in this one, you has, hath he quickened, that's old English, for he's made me alive, who were dead in trespasses and in sins. So I decided years ago, you know what, I'm not ashamed. Of what I did, it, it was shameful, okay? But I don't have any problem recognizing the fact that I was delivered from darkness. I, I've met a, a, a lot of so-called believers who find it hard to admit, and, and I think it's because they have their righteousness coming from uh, being in church all their lives, which, you know, probably means they're not saved. Because being raised in church doesn't save anybody. It has nothing to do with it. I was raised in church and almost went to hell. I was dead in trespasses and in sins. Wherein, verse 2, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, According to the prince of the power of the air, that's the devil, and the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Now that was me. I don't have any problem recognizing that was me. Okay, But I, I decided to let Jesus pay the price for me, which was my choice, even though I was destined or predestined from before the foundation of the world to be found in him. Okay, and, and so... Uh, but I still would have gone to hell if I had not made the right choice because my will stood in the situation. Okay, but when I found out that I was just being deceived and, you know, I really wanted life and I wanted Jesus and I didn't want to go to hell, when I found out what it really was all about, I made the right choice. Which I'm sure is the case with most of the people in this room. Strong possibility you wouldn't even be here if that were not the case. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, verse 3. Among whom also we had our conversation in times past, conversation is lifestyle, times past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. I have no, no problem admitting that that's who I was. 
But God, who is rich in mercy, and this is that same statement I made to you, rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. So from before the foundation of the world, he planned this way for mankind to be redeemed. It's called redemption. And it was because of his great love for man. And his love stands, but uh, if man makes the right, wrong choice, Amen. guess what? Yeah, it doesn't make it, you know, that this, this was told me right, right before I got saved. Praise the Lord. I, I said, well, if God loved me so much, I was talking to a believer. If God loved me so much, why would he uh, send me to hell? And their answer, the only one they could come up with it is because he loves you so much. Yeah, I know it's a, yeah. It, it didn't work really good on me either, but <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless, I, I still knew that there was some truth in that statement. Even when we were dead in sins, uh, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. Now remember, you were in him from before the foundation of the world. That's back there in the first chapter. And that was you. How many of you are saved? So he's talking about you. You were dead in sins. Even then he has quickened us together with Christ. For by grace are you saved. So he brought you out of death. Not denying the fact that you were dead. Has raised us up together. Now listen to this statement. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that's actually where you and I are right now. You know what? And so when I, I know that now, I, I didn't know it years ago, but I know that now. And I, I personally don't care what anybody thinks about me and Jesus. You know, if they want to scorn me and think they're going to put me in a box, go ahead. <laughs> it, does, it won't hurt me because my eyes are on something else. I'm going to stick with Jesus. Now, recognizing, and again, you know, this is a temporary thing with Jesus among the nations of the world. Okay? He's not always going to be there, and he's not always going to be the lamb. Okay, but I, I'm going to stick with him, whatever it is. So we're, we're doing this as an illustration, just, uh, and, and I realize it's nothing but a, an illustration, but it does show you how to act these things out. Hallelujah. So there is no uh, family appeal. There, there's no job appeal. There's no money appeal. There's no fame appeal that can match the glory that is revealed in Christ Jesus. I'm going to stick with him. Okay, now watch this statement. Look at verse 7. That in the ages to come, ages are still coming? Yeah, there's more than one spoken about in the New Testament. In the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, you know, years ago I used to read that and, and I would just get this like I was a, doing a flip on the inside without even understanding what I was so excited about. But then I started focusing on what he was talking about, the ages to come. Well, which ages is he talking about? Well, I'm in an age right now, first of all. Second of all, you know, there's the, the age uh, coming for the millennial reign. And then there is eternity. And that's the part that has been revealed to us. There might be more to it than that. But you know what? You know, that's my destiny, and that's the one that I choose. So every time you're faced with a major choice in life, what you ought to do is choose your destiny. Okay, now if you make the wrong choice, yeah, your, your word will hold as long as it's your word, and you'll go down with it. Recommend that you don't. But it is your choice. 
That one's not going over very big. You don't have to forsake your grandmother or your mother or, you know, the way your dad raised you or anything uh, to choose your destiny. You just choose him. You know, they're, they're all going to make all of their choices, too. And for the record, when you stand before him, you won't even know who they are. Yeah, they're, they're not the determiners, de, de, determining factor in your destination. I'm going to stick with him. Now, I, I realize, you know, that, that's just a, that, that's a handmade lamb. Okay? So he, he's just an illustration. But the lamb of God was slain from before the foundation of the world. And what the word says is that you and I were actually in him. So, Hallelujah. How many of you are a part of him? See, so that, that's the reason why, throw it up in the air, where you fall, okay, you're coming down on the right side of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Now, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet, if you would, please. Glory to God. The Lord is good. I'm glad I came to church today. Okay, so we, we had one, it was one young man in the first service who uh, decided to answer the altar call. And, you know, I, I can always tell when somebody has no background in these things, he just ran right up on the platform. I thought, oh, gee, you know, it's going to make, it, make this easy. He, he wasn't afraid. Hallelujah. So it, that, that be the case with you in this room and you're trying to figure out nobody's going to condemn you. Nobody's going to intimidate you. Nobody's going to make you look bad or at least we're not going to try to. Okay. But you need to make uh, your own choice. Hallelujah. And what the Lord showed me um, some time back was that there were people who had uh, become uh, well, you know, they pulled away from the Lord during the pandemic thing. And now upon attempting to come back, what they found out is that there's something lacking in their relationship. And they want it restored. If I'm talking to you, now it might not have happened because of the pandemic, but you say, you know, I, I want to get back with the Lord. I want full and complete total restoration. And maybe it is such that maybe you've never been close to the Lord. Okay, well, let's get started. So if, if, if that speaks to you, come and stand here. So I, I decided uh, a few months ago that, you know, these people were coming and standing on the street corner and asking for help. And so I decided to help them. Amen. Okay. And, and I got corrected in, in the first service. I talked about that little sign that they put out there. You know, in some neighborhoods, uh, don't give them any money. And, and he instructed me that it's not a law. So uh, I was thinking, you know, that almost that I was breaking the law by giving them some money. But kindness goes a long ways with God. Okay. Now, so here, here's a little thing for you. What if they use it for the wrong thing? Well, they, they probably will. But once it leaves your hand, it's not any of your business. Let the Lord deal with them. 
Hallelujah. God is good. Okay. Glory to God. It's good to see you. How are you? I, I, got, you, I got an idea for you. Why don't all of you come up on the platform? Why not? This is not a touch me not space. You know, the, the holiness of the platform. <laughs> That's a church thing. It's not a kingdom thing. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay, we'll, we'll wait a moment longer. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So I, I'm going to lead you guys in a simple prayer. Okay. And uh, would like to ask you to follow me in this prayer. I'm also going to ask the congregation to go along with us. Okay. Most of them this already applies to. But what's going to happen with you is you're going to be changed into a new person. That miracle that we keep talking about is the thing that's going to happen. So you need to understand it doesn't make any difference what you've done. How many times you've done it, where you came from, who you are, what color you are. It has nothing to do with any of that. Okay. God is no respecter of persons. Okay. And so what's going to happen with you is the blood of Jesus is going to cleanse you. This, this, I'm, I'm talking to them, but it's really... Everybody up here, the blood of Jesus is going to cleanse you, okay? The past, like we were singing about, the past is in the past. Now look, from before the foundation of the world, see the reason why you're on this platform is because from the foundation of the world, he knew you would choose him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so I want to lead you in a, a simple prayer. Uh, if you would say this with me, Lord Jesus, thank you for your precious blood. Lord Jesus, I ask you in Jesus name, come into my life as my savior. I confess you as Lord. I believe in my heart that you are raised from the dead. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for my cleansing. All sin in my life is now behind me. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah.